Hey. Hey, good morning. Morning. Well, it's afternoon here. <laughs> but, right, right, like, time zone. <laughs> where, are you, where are you at right now? I am in LA. Oh, okay. Nice, nice. I'm Tatiana, by the way. Um, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm super excited to talk to you today because I was telling Madison yesterday, like Outer Banks has been my quarantine obsession. Like I'm so obsessed with the show. I love it. Thank you so much. We're, we're so like, we're like, we can't even believe the reception that it's getting. You know, we're all like super duper excited about it. Yeah. Talk to me about like, what has, what has it been like to hear like the fans reception to the show? Yeah. I mean, like the fans are like, they're absolutely amazing. Like we have some of like the best fans, you know, I, we see a lot of like the edits and some of the posts they do. And like, we, we love, we love hearing the support for the show, you know, the ships and all everything. We, we love it. Yeah. Um, so I want to talk to you about your humble beginnings before Outer Banks. Like you're from Texas, right? Right. He's in Texas. Mm -hmm. So, and, and then you were in sports too, right? You did like mm -hmm. football and stuff like that. So how, how did you make that transition to acting? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I started acting, like wanting to act, especially when I was around like six, seven or eight. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was just kind of like this thing I always had a bit of a passion for, just the movies in general. Like, like it was a big treat, you know, when my dad got to take us to the movies because we're a big family and it's expensive for us to go to the movies. So it was like a thing, you know? Mm-hmm. And so we just kind of, I just kind of grew up with this love of like movies and like, I would, every time I'd get a DVD, I'd watch the bonus features of the movie. I'd, um, I'd, I'd study it. I'd look at the actors. And I remember telling my dad something like, something along the lines of, I wanted to be like a superhero or something when I was a kid. Because mm -hmm. Spider-Man had just come out and he was like, yeah. oh, those, those aren't real people. Those are actors. And I was like, well, I guess I want to be an actor. And yeah, I love that. Just kind of took off from there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I feel like I've heard everybody's story of how they got involved with Outer Banks. What do you have like a crazy audition story? Um, or is yours more traditional? Um, yeah, I think it's kind of that same traditionalist story. Like I auditioned, auditioned um, for the first time back in February of uh, 2019. Mm -hmm. Got the call back, did a chemistry and Rudy was actually playing John B at the time instead of JJ. Interesting. His, his story is absolutely insane. Uh -huh. um, he was playing John B. And I got the call maybe two weeks later that um, they wanted to cast me for me out to Charleston. And it was a blessing. I remember I remember when I got the, got the news, like me and my dad, like my dad is kind of like my surrogate manager. He's mm -hmm. not my actual manager, but he, he acted like that for a really long time and still does. Yeah. But I remember I told him like, as soon as like we, like we found out we got a big part or like anything, like we were gonna play Juicy by you know notorious and, uh, <laughs> yes. yeah I, I put it i put it on the uh i put it on the um television i, I, I streamed it through the phone mm -hmm. and as soon as he walked in like the house it was like you know oh you get a grip you know like it started up and we just started like you know dancing and crying and hugging mm -hmm. each other like it's something we've been working for for like maybe 10 years at that point right just to try to like you know breaking breaking into the industry is the hardest part mm -hmm. and, you know, once you got your foot in the door you know it's who knows where your ceiling is and what um, what drew you to want to be a part of the show? I think it was just like the the way they thought about the characters mm -hmm. and sort of like this more than the stereotype of the nerd, the, the, the dude, the, the bad boy, the right. girl characters. You know, they, they tried to, they, they really had to, wanted to listen to what we had to say about flesh in the mouth and and like how we can make this more realistic, more three dimensional. How this friendship can be more real than it than it already is, because it's yeah. a real friendship. We're all super, super close and tight. Mm -hmm. And um, we were just trying to like, I think I think the writers would come and like talk, like especially Shannon and John. They would come and talk to us like, hey, what do you think about this? You know, like we're thinking about taking Pope or, or whoever here. Like, yeah. what do you think about this? And then we would give our if we would give our opinions and. Sometimes like dialogue, we 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 look back, we see another script, and like, oh yeah, we remember, I remember talking about that. So um, I think it was just a chance to work on a project that was not only the was the pilot amazing when I read it, the, it was an amazing pilot. Yeah. Um, it was that, it was the idea, the 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 idea the people behind it had, you know. Mm -hmm. that it, well, it didn't feel like a studio. It didn't feel like a studio made it. It felt like people made it. 
Yeah, definitely. And the, it just radiates off the page. And like you were saying, you guys' chemistry, it's like you've known each other your whole lives, you know? You can really, really see that in the characters. Um, I want to talk about uh, the dynamic between you and your dad on the show. Because I feel like yeah. um, sometimes... In the, I love how they captured that because I feel like sometimes in the black community, like we do feel this pressure to, mm -hmm. you know, have this ex sort of excellence and stuff like that. And I thought that was really captured well in the show. That was a, that was a deep conversation I had with Roger because that's because when people talk about like what do I think about Pope is most like myself, you know, I get that question a lot. Yeah, it's that pressure. It's that pressure of being from both sides of the coin mm -hmm. of being from that poor, lower income household you know, with my, my, with my, you know, hood friends and, <laughs> and like having the good grades in school and like mm -hmm. the ambition to do something bigger and trying to like balance how much do I work versus how much do I kind of enjoy being a teenager. Like I right. didn't, in high school, I, I gave, I didn't go to prom. I had, I was, I was, I was obligated to acting. I, I, I rarely had girlfriends, mm -hmm. even if it, you know, it always, like, I always had to like leave to do something acting wise. So right. I sacrificed, I didn't go to parties. I sacrificed all that. I didn't even get to play my senior year of football, um, yeah. which was, yeah, I played, I played three years. I played all the way up in my junior year. I was, you know, I, I come out and I was doing pretty well. And like, it was like the consensus that I, I, you know, I was probably like, I was starting, but then like the opportunity came for me to move to Los Angeles and it was like, you know, mm -hmm. and then, and then going back to, to Roger of portraying that a realistic black father, black son relationship. Now, spoilers for anybody who hasn't seen it, but I, I would never ever punch my dad in the face. <laughs> yeah. that, you know, you know, it, it's not going down like that. You know, it's not going down like that. Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah um, but like, I remember like the writer came to me and we were talking, talking to Roger. I was like, how can we make this as realistic as possible? Yeah. You know, something that, because it's an out there thing, like a black kid punches his dad in the face and he doesn't die the next day. It's, it's kind of <laughs> out there. Right. Out, an out there concept. But I, talk, I even talked to my dad about it. My dad was like, it wouldn't be going down like that. But we had to make it come from like this real emotional place of like, it wasn't so much the punch as it was, it's finally the son standing back up to his dad. Right. And I think that's what is what the emotional crux of that scene was, especially mm -hmm. like with Roger. That's what hurt him. It wasn't so much the punch. Like the punch probably didn't really get him like that. Probably wasn't right. that hard. But it was the fact that you would do that mm -hmm. what is what killed him, yeah. you know? That was such a powerful scene for your character, too. Um, just to see that whole, like, tit for tat with you and your dad. And I feel like the whole season, you know, you were talking about your Merit Scholarship interview. And then we see in that moment, um, you don't even hesitate when you, when you realize about with John B. Um, I think Pope made the right decision. Do you think Pope made the right decision? Um, and, you know, time will kind of tell with that. <laughs> but, like... I've seen, like, I think, as Pope, I think, yeah, he made the right decision. Mm -hmm. You know, at the time, after it just happened, I'm sure he was, like, regretting every their choice he made in his life. Yeah. But I was talking, like, somebody was saying, like, do you think he'll get his merit scholarship again, like, in a future season? I was like, I think sometimes you just got to deal with loss. You know, sometimes you don't get everything you want. Sometimes you work for something, and you give it up, and it's gone. Right. And I think, I think if he just gets it back immediately, that sacrifice was for nothing. And that character yeah. development was for nothing. Mm -hmm. you know, that was a big. That was a big moment for Pope, you know, because that's all he talks about all the show. I know. <laughs> I mean, like, man, that man says merit scholarship more than more than probably John B. in the whole show. <laughs> yeah, and just like you realize the how it important it is to him, and then when JJ, you know, takes the fall for you, that's another big scene where we see the friendship between all of you guys um, throughout the series as well. Yeah. What? What was um one of your favorite things to shoot in the show? Uh, probably, like in terms of fun, like mm -hmm. just like it was cool. Was probably that crane house, like not the exterior parts because it was hot, nasty, and gross out there. <laughs> like it was gross, but like some uh -huh. of that exterior stuff, like just like I like when all the characters are kind of together. Mm -hmm. and they're, they're they're going at it. JJ and Pope are bantering. They're they're making jokes with each other. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the kind of stuff that I really like because I think our, when we're together, like when we're all together, it's like something special. Like yeah. we're like, 
we're friends for real. So being able to be yourselves and like your real friendship on like a TV, like while you're doing the job that you like have been trying to do for years that you love to do, mm -hmm. is something like, it was just like a, a surreal, a amazing experience. Yeah. And I feel like everybody's so ready for season two because <laughs> we all binged it in like three days and we're just so anxious and so ready. What, do you have like any theories or something maybe you would want to happen in season two? I mean, like, it's so open. Like, I feel like I feel like we're not allowed to really say anything too much about season two. They tell yeah. us, you know, just that's how it goes. Um, personally for Pope, if I just had to like throw anything out there, I think the idea of like, like, where is he at? Is he still in Desert Storm? I, I don't give a care mode. Mm -hmm. Does he sit back? How does that affect his relationship with Kiara? You know, yeah. like, what is that? What does that even turn into? It wasn't really fleshed out in season one. You know, are they gonna like? What's gonna? Is that gonna be fleshed out more? I'm, I'm, I'm interested. There was an idea being floated around of like, of of Hayward and his family adopting JJ, like being his surrogate father. Interesting. I heard that idea somewhere, mm -hmm. and the idea. The idea of, of of JJ and Pope like having a smoke session together, like Kiara and and Sarah did the first yeah. season, is something I really like. That really intrigues me. I think that'd be mm -hmm. like. How do you feel about like all the ships? Because lately, the fans have been talking about they see Kiara and JJ together more than Kiara and Pope. I think it's awesome. Like the fact that you are invested enough in our characters and in our story <laughs> to care where like if what fictional characters are together is literally the coolest thing. Yeah, it's like it's like you care so much about these characters. You just want to see them happy. You want to see mm -hmm. someone happy with each other. You know, like I think the thing was like somebody. Like I think the thing is kind of like JJ needs a win. He's he's had he's gotten the, like the crap kicked out of him the whole show. Right. So you know, I think they see him and Kiara together as kind of a win. Like oh, it's a win for JJ if he gets Kiara. Yeah. You know, some some say like it's you know a chemistry thing, but I think that too. Like it's just like it's just interesting to see like what because I think we all work really well together. I, yeah. I, I'm really interested to see what the writers want to do with the characters. You know, the writers know what they're doing. They said, like, Jonas said he had, like, four or five seasons already planned out. So Ooh, what happens? Exciting. So do you, do you think Kiara and Pope are a match? Like, why do you, like, what do you think attracts, like, I know in the beginning, like, in the first episode, all the guys are kind of, like, into her. But what do you think Pope really thinks about Ki Kiara? Like, you know? Yeah, it's like, it's like you saw a little hints of that in the first season of him, like, mm -hmm. you know, looking at her, like, it was a thing that he could never obtain. And I think I said this in another, I think I said, like, after Pope loses that scholarship, and then, like, the gold's gone with Cameron. Yeah. He has nothing to lose, you know? His relationship with his father is bad right now. He can't, mm -hmm. like, he really can't go home again. Yeah. He left, he walked out of his scholarship. So, and Kiara was kind of that last thing that he had to be, like, like if I don't get like if like you know I might as well take shoot my shot right now. Yeah. Because literally nothing else holding me back from it. I'm he's high, he's drunk, so he's like I'm gonna shoot my shot, and um, and he fails, you know, <laughs> like he fails pretty hard. It's like I'm like I'm like part of me wonders like was it like did she is she actually like is she actually attracted to him? Was it the wrong time to do it? You know, the, he did he did come back at the end and like kind of save her, and mm -hmm. he's like he's there as an emotional support. You know, I'm trying to I'm interested to see if Pope. I think when Pope has confidence is what she, is what she's more attracted to, because Pope finds his confidence in the last couple of episodes. He oh, finds for sure, it. yeah. And I want to I want to make sure his confidence kind of stays with him. Yeah. That's a, that's a nice like little character, like a little character arc for him to have. Mm -hmm. And now it's and now it's about him not being so much of that Desert Storm rage monster and more of like, all right, now you got to be smart, Pope, quirky Pope again. But you should keep some of the confidence you had mm -hmm. out of that. Yeah. So that that'll be an interesting little arc. What are the ways that you think you're um, similar and different to Pope? Yeah, I'm, I'm a nerd. Like, I'm not going <laughs> to lie. <laughs> I'm a bit of a nerd. Uh, not, not to that extent. Like, I wasn't getting any merit scholarship interviews or anything. But, like, I did, <laughs> I did relatively well in school. I was, like, top. I was in the top 10% of my class at the time. That's pretty good. Yeah, I was. I mean, it was, like, you know, like, I was, like, the, the rule was with my family. Like, I had to keep good grades or I could not act. You know, I think a lot of us, a lot of us, especially in the black community, you know, like, if you want to do the thing you want to do, you got to keep good grades. Yeah. And facts. So, like, I would, like, it would just, it was more more than, like, being smart. It was more like, I just did the work. I just, everything I had to do, I had, I did it. Um, so, like, that, um, 
you know, I, I especially like in high school, I probably had a little bit, I had some confidence issues for sure. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you have to learn that as you get older, you learn like what matters and what really doesn't, you know, that's like what shapes you as a man. And um, I think the willingness to do things for my friends like that, you know, mm -hmm. he's at the end of the day, he's ride or die for his friends. And I think Absolutely. Yeah. Good and, um, you know, I like to think that I have that trait too. Mm -hmm. uh, differences. I'm not as I'm not as unathletic as he is and like awkward. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had to like I had to teach myself how to not that that scene where he has to like throw the rock at the window. I kept hitting the window, and I was <laughs> yeah. And they were like throw it less athletic. So I threw it with my left hand and I still hit the window. Wow. Okay. <laughs> but I had to like it took like so many takes to like get that little floater. I just did it like a floater mm -hmm. and like had to hit the trash can. But yeah, that's probably where I differ from him the most. Is just like I'm not I'm not as unathletic as he is. Do you think that the Pogues could successfully plan any heist without Pope? Because I oh. don't. <laughs> no, they, they, they implode. They'd be like they'd have the idea and they'd be like, all right, how do we do it? You know, yeah. I think Kiara could like corral him a little bit, but you need Pope. You need the brains. You need the one who's thinking all that stuff. Like thinking all like. Like they'd probably come up with the plan, but they wouldn't come up with the backup plan for the backup plan, and that's where right. both come. So like, yeah, I think you definitely need all, especially all four of them. Like, I don't think you could do it without JJ. I don't think you could do it without John B. And I don't think you could do it without Kiara. Yeah. Because you need all four when they're all four together is when that like really when it, they really work. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to talk about like how has your life changed since outer banks like this is you know it's number one on netflix top 10 everybody's watching it you guys are everywhere how has your life like dramatically changed since this point uh, i mean like other than like social media which i really didn't pay attention to mm -hmm. for this nothing like <laughs> i wake up i mess with my sisters i work out i talk to my dad i try to like figure out like things i can do to help my craft i practice guitar um, yes, I didn't even know you could play guitar. That is so awesome. Do you think that'll be happen in like Outer Banks season two? If Pope will be playing the guitar. I hope so. I think, <laughs> it'd be, I think it'd be cute for him to play for Kiara. Yeah. But um, yeah. I mean, like you just you just kind of like pick something and practice it and try to get better at it. You know, I miss the cast. I really do miss. We used to hang out like all the time together, mm -hmm. and we like all each other. We we're like, man, I really miss you. All right. Some bye. of them are quarantining together, right? <laughs> yeah few of them like they kind of got stuck together so like we might as well quarantine together a lot of them don't have families here yeah so like my family's here so luckily i just went i just went stay with my family mm -hmm. but they some of them don't so like they're like they just like well we're a family so we're quarantined together so that yeah I, i'm sure if my family wasn't here i'd be with them yeah absolutely and it, and you can just really i really i feel like everybody this is like a cast people want to be a part of because you guys just have like that family and such that close-knit unit. Um, what has been keeping you quarantined and keeping you entertained in quarantine? I heard that you're like a big anime fan. Yeah, um, I do. I did. I just finished Samurai Champloo again. That's a name mm -hmm. job for anybody who knows what that is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been watching. I've been trying to catch up on some of my animes. I've been drawn a bit more you know, trying to get back into my art. Like before, before I wanted to be an actor, I wanted to be an animator. So like I started drawing when I was really young and Very I, cool. like, one just kind of took over the other and I've kind of fell out of like my art. So I'm trying to get back into it. My sister, my little sister, Jillian, really, really good artist. Like mm -hmm. she's 12 and she's better than I was when I was 12. And she's yeah. probably like, better than me for sure. So like, I'm trying to like, like mold her into my little protege. So she can like, <laughs> go out and do some like Disney animation. Ah, uh, man, I wish I could draw. I, that is not my skill set. I have a little sister too, and she can definitely draw a lot better than me. Um, and so you've been doing anime. Um, have you been watching anything besides Outer Banks? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I don't even, I don't really watch Outer Banks again. Like, I watched it when, like, we got, like, little early screeners to do, mm -hmm. like, that stuff before all this. I watched it maybe three or four times in. I was like, all right, I can't watch it again. What? Like, <laughs> Because it was like, because it, it got to this point where I was like, man, like I started questioning my every little move, like every like thing I did. I was like, oh, I look so gross in that scene. Why well, I look so unattractive there. Dang, I should have like wore sunblock. My skin is so much darker. <laughs> like, I'm not that dark, like guys, I'm not. I promise. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, you're out there in that Charleston sun and it's like humidity and it's like, it reminded, it reminded me of being back home in Texas. Mm -hmm. And um, I was just like, I can't watch it anymore. So like, I've been watching literally everything but, or I'll be like, I'll like just not watch TV for a day. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'll play, I'll play video games. I'm like, I'm like on 2K and like Smash Bros and like, you know, I just, I'll play video games. So if anybody here plays, uh, hit me up for sure. <laughs> and I also heard Madison told me that you were a big jokester. And I heard that you keep a lot of memes on your phone. What is the meme that you've been using the most right now? It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably that one. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> And is it true that you know the movie The Road to El Dorado word for word? Start to finish. There are two movies and like that movie and Mystery Men, I know, start to finish. What is your favorite quote from The Road to El Dorado? Um, the one where it's all like, stars, not aligned. <laughs> That's my favorite one, too. Favorite that movie one. is such a classic. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's really under, like, when I talk about, like, like what I based my banter kind of off with like JJ or anybody, it's that movie. Yeah. Because the way Kenneth Kenneth Branagh and um oh gosh, I'm blanking on the other guy's name. But the way they like the way they can like do that kind of banter in an animation, mm -hmm. like especially because like, they're not sometimes they're not in the same room. I'm sure they are sometimes, but most of the time they're not in the same room. The way they can like make it feel real and like improv and like funny and like just mm -hmm. little things. You're not noticing like little lines that'll like go over your head the first time you hear it, the second time you hear it, you're like, oh, that's yeah. hilarious. Like, Kevin, oh, it's Kevin Klein, thank you. It's brought <laughs> Kevin Klein. Um, the way they can like banner, like that's that's something I strive to do. Like, and I heard you and um, Rudy did that, like in a few takes, right? You guys were improving. Like, there was a whole scene that you guys just improved, and they actually ended up using that. Yeah, it was um, that whole piece. That. That's <laughs> That was out of nowhere. It was just kind of, you know, you just try to make each other laugh on mm -hmm. set. You know, you try to make, you try to mess up the tape. And um, that's our goal is like, if everybody laughs on set, then you did something right. Yeah. Uh, so it was that, that line was improv. There was um, a few of the lines like during that, like when John B. brings Kiara into the group for the first time, a few of those, he kind of just like, I remember Jonas walked over to us. We were sitting there. He was like, I need you guys to just go for this thing. Like do say whatever, do whatever, just go. Mm -hmm. We were like, oh, I bet. And we like kept like kept going like in between takes, before takes, we would just kind of keep saying stuff. Yeah. And like Madeline and Maddie, Madison Bailey are both like really in it. Like they're like upset with each other. And Madeline, like she's not, she was not, she was like, she didn't mean it like this, but she turns over and, and we're like talking. She's like, do you guys like stop? Do you breathe <laughs> ever? <laughs> and she meant it like, like, I can't believe you guys like still have stuff to say. Like it's right. crazy. Mm -hmm. But it came off just because she was in character as like, shut up. <laughs> and Rudy and I just look at each other and we're like, and we say nothing for like like the next two takes. And she's like, I did not mean it like that. And we're like, no, 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 no. We get it. Shut up. Shut we're going to stop. We're at work. <laughs> <laughs> um, so speaking, you know, you said you hadn't had a lot of time before Outer Banks to like date or anything like that. There's a lot of hard eyes in these emoji in, you know, in these comments. <laughs> How's your love life now since Outer Banks? I mean, it's something I try not to focus on. I feel like, you know, you do your work and then you'll end up where you're supposed to be. You know, I'm trying to like, like you want to find, you want to find like somebody like eventually somebody who's like, Who's like, I don't say like, I don't want to find somebody who's into all the things I'm into. I want to find somebody who's into me enough to care about the things that I'm into, at least a little bit, you know? Like, yeah. I don't want you to come in, like, you don't got to really care about anime, but you got to care that I care about anime, you know? Yeah, that makes so a lot like, of sense, actually. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. like, it's like, we'll see. I mean, like, I'm not like actively looking for a girlfriend, but like, you, you just like, you never know. You can't like pass up your opportunities when you, when you find somebody who's beautiful and who, who like on in, like inside and out and who like cares you know yeah i think i think the most attractive thing about a woman is like a somebody who's funny somebody who can like hold their own in a conversation mm -hmm. and, like you know smart it's like i guess like i don't know like it's like we all we like we're trying to find like the perfect like nobody's looking for the perfect person we're just looking for somebody who like who, who cares enough about you to care about other things right so as jd would you date 
Pogue Princess, Kira, or would you date Kook Princess, Sarah Cameron? Ooh, that's tough. That's big tough. <laughs> Ooh. They both got, like, such great qualities. Like, it's hard to, like, pick They one. do. They do. Right. And I feel like if I choose Maddie Bailey and Clown are going to call me, like, um, excuse me, JD? <laughs> um, I don't know. I'd probably go for, I'd probably go for Kiara, probably. I probably would go for Kiara. Okay. Okay. We can see that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me today. Is there anything that you want to tell the fans right now who are watching about you or about other banks? Uh, yes. Thank you guys so much for getting the OBX Insta page to a million followers. Now Rudy Ponko has to make a TikTok. And Woo! he doesn't do it. He hates TikTok. He hates everything. He and I'm very excited to make him post cringe. But he doesn't like because like we me and him both kind of swore we wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. But then I ended up having to break down just because I needed to make we needed to make a video to kind of like like hey OBX is about to stream. It was like a little trailer video and um, yeah. and I ended up uploading like another behind the scene things to it. So I made like I made like maybe three or four of them. But like like I think that's gonna be it for me for a while. However, I did promise that I did promise Rudy I'd do it with him. Like I'd do something crazy with him. Okay. So and we expect more guitar videos. For sure. I'm already we're. Rudy and I are planning something right now, actually. That'll that is gonna that's gonna drop kind of this week. In terms of us collabing on exclusive. Like okay. Well, all, I'm sure everybody's gonna be looking out for that. Yeah, I mean, guys, like, look out. It'll be it'll be kind of cool. We're just gonna have fun. Everybody yeah. loves like you guys' on and off screen bromance. It's like the best thing ever. <laughs> yeah, Rudy and I are tight. We're like. I mean, we're all tight. Like, I call mm -hmm. all of them. Like, Drew, Chase, Austin, Rudy. We're all super tight. So, the mm -hmm. bromance is like a five-way kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I asked Madison this. So, I ask you, what are, what, um, give us three reasons why everybody should watch Outer Banks on Netflix. Um, it's got the summer vibes. You know, we're all stuck inside right now. If you, if you're, if you're yearning to be outside with your friends, this is a show that'll definitely fill that gap. Um, two, the story is gonna take you for like a crazy loop. Like, yeah. you'll, you'll be watching it thinking it's one thing and then all of a sudden it'll hit you out of left field with something you never thought, like just some more craziness. Uh, and three, you know, it's, a, it's, our, it's our little passion project, baby. You know, we, that friendship's real and, and that extends to the crew, the, the costume, the hair, the makeup, the gaffers, the lighters everybody pas and all sound it, it extends to the crew and and it's like we all we all made it like a love project and you know yeah. it being out there is more than enough mm -hmm. absolutely and i'm so glad i got to talk to you today because i'm so obsessed with the show i'm such a fan so this is like it's in, I mean, it's a like, moment <laughs> you know, like yeah. this is my shrine you know i gotta talk to my shrine real quick so mm -hmm. Have you ever you. had a summer like the summer in Outer Banks? Like when I was shooting Outer Banks, that was it. <laughs> I mean, like I'm not gonna lie. Like I went out, I went out in summers and did some like because I'm from Texas. I was I did four wheelers and fishing and EE stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just the nature of living in Texas. Yeah. But um, never like never like Outer Banks. Mm -hmm. We like we actually we act, like we actually did all that except for like the crazy like fights and like treasure right. and stuff. Like all the fun pogue being out there in the water. We did that. We all did it as a friend group off camera. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's, it's just so real to us. Yeah. And it really shows and you should be so proud of yourself because you're amazing in the show and the show is fantastic and everybody should watch it, you know, check out other banks on Netflix. Thank you so much for talking with me today. I Thank had you fun. fun. It's a, it's a, it's an honor really. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right. Talk to you soon. Bye. Please.